Hi everyone, my name is Jens, and in the first five minutes of this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy an R token on the reserve protocol. The easiest way to deploy an R token is to navigate to register.app, which is the first dApp to interact with the reserve protocol smart contracts. And once you get to the dApp, you can scroll down until you get to the deploy R token button. If you click on that button, you get to the deployment wizard, which is a form that you can just fill in from top to bottom. And once you've done that, you can actually deploy the R token afterwards. We're going to start with the basics, which is the R token name. And I'm going to, to use a tutorial R token as the name uh, for the purpose of this demo. And as a ticker, I'm going to use test. Right after defining the ticker, you can also see that the staking token ticker gets defined, in this case, test RSR. So what that means is if people stake RSR tokens on your R token, they receive test RSR in return. The next field we have to define is the mandate. You can either look at this tooltip right here to understand what the mandate is. For now, I'm going to keep things simple and just going to define test mandate and continue in the process. The next uh, thing we have to define is the primary basket. This is very important because this, this is the initial collateral basket that will back our R token. You can use the add to basket button here to, this, to, to choose from a list of supported assets to back your R token. If you want to use an asset that is currently not supported yet, which means it does not have a collateral plugin yet, you can make your own collateral plugin. For now, I'm going to continue with some assets that are already supported, add them to my primary basket. Once I've done that, I can also update the weight in the basket of each of these assets. So let's say I want less exposure to a die in this case and a USDC and more exposure to a USDT. I can update these values accordingly. You can also see right after defining the basket that register calculates the estimated basket APY for you. That's based on a 30 day trailing average of the of these assets uh, in their in their own markets. This will be relevant when we get to the revenue distribution section. After defining the primary basket, we have to define our emergency basket. You get the same list of assets that you can choose from. I'm going to choose a couple of stable coins. And the way the, this emergency bas basket works is the protocol can automatically detect the defaults in the primary basket assets. If that happens, the protocol will swap out those faulty assets for emergency collateral to make sure that your R token remains stable or remains pegged to whatever it's pegged to. You can see here that we can use an ordered list and you can drag and drop this list to choose which uh, collateral the plugin, the protocol should prioritize. And you can also uh, use a diversity factor to choose how many of these assets the, collateral, the, the protocol should buy to swap out faulty collateral. Next section we have to look at is the revenue distribution. So I talked before about this estimated basket APY. So in this case, our basket will generate a certain amount of yield and that yield or a certain amount of revenue. And that revenue can then be distributed to whoever we like. You can choose to redirect some of the revenue to the R token holders. You can also choose to redirect some to the Rs or stakers, which incentivizes them to stake on your R token. Or you can also just add a uh, arbitrary address and send some revenue that way. So in this case, let's say I want to uh, redirect 1% of revenue to my own account. I can just say I want to share 1% to an arbitrary address. I want this revenue to be either R token or RSR. In this case, I'm going to choose to uh, send the revenue purely as R, R tokens. So 100% as R token. And then I'm just going to define my own address as the receiving address. Next up, we get to two sections, the backing manager section and the other parameters section. These parameters are mostly technical in nature. Um, and we define a couple of default values that you can use uh, if you don't want to tweak the R token too much because it's mostly technical. However, it might be relevant for your case to update these. Now, once you've gone through these fields, you can actually deploy the R token itself. The way you do that is you deploy, you press this deploy R token button right here. And uh, your wallet will ask you to sign a transaction, which I'm going to do right now. Once you've done that, we now have to wait for the transaction to clear. 
and then we can continue to deploy governance. Now that the RToken deployment transaction has gone through, we can go ahead with the second part of our deployment, which is the deployment of governance. You can see on top that you can uh, choose to go with the Alexios governor format, which is the default format and uses staked RSR to propose and vote on proposals. If you choose to go with, Alexi with Governor Alexios, uh, you can define a guardian address and a pauser address. These are two protection roles for your R token in the case of a, an attack or a bug. And then you also get some governance parameters, such as what the voting period should be, uh, etc. Lastly, you can also decide uh, how to launch your R token. Should it be launched in a pause state or a, func a fully functional state? Keep in mind that if you launch it in the pause state with governance, then governance will actually have to uh, vote on unpausing the R token. One more thing is you can also uh, use any other governance contract, even those that you write yourself. If you want to do that, you can uh, disable this uh, tool right here, and then you can define your own owner address, and that can be any arbitrary uh, Ethereum address. Again, you have the option for a guardian and a pauser and the option to choose a state after deployment. I'm going to go ahead with the governor Alexios format and we can use the, uh, and I'm going to deploy fully functionally and I'm going to use the deploy governance button right here, which will ask me to sign another transaction. All right, now, once that transaction has gone through, your R token is officially deployed. 